Yeah, I think uh, Kilmarnock are. I, I think Kilmarnock are a good side. I think it's been well documented. The, the majority of their points have have came on at home. Uh, that's that, that is a fact that they've they got their first away win the last time out against St Mirren. Um, I think they've been pretty close to it at times as well, and I think Derek will tell you that. So I don't buy into that record too much. Um, and and from our point of view, I think we know exactly what we're going to face, and I think that they probably know it as well. When you're getting to that fourth time of playing each other, um, there's an understanding of what person they've got, there's an understanding of how they're going to play, um, I think they carry a real threat going forward, um, I think they're a physical side, I think they're a well organised side as I would always expect from, from Derek McInnes, um, I think they're good at set plays, I think they, you know, they've got umpteen options from long throws, from wide free kicks and they, and they pose that threat so there's no surprise um, to myself um, but there'll be a threat in open play as well so it's just making sure that we're well versed in that scenario um, and we can cope with that but really important that we can try and pick holes in what they do as well um, and that's that's been how we've prepared for every single game so far um, and I think it's going to be a really competitive game I don't think we come in um, imagining that we're going to be gifted anything we know that Kilmarnock are fighting for a lot still this season same as ourselves um, and, and as I say I always think that tees it up to be a to be a decent spectacle and to be a, a, a good game of football. Have you got fitness wise, everyone? Yeah, we're carrying one or two things. Um, unfortunately, um, we're assessing a few. Um, to be honest, I'm not ruling probably three or four out at this stage, but we've had niggles with um, guys like Dean Cornelius, um, Harry Payton, uh, a couple of guys, Ross Tierney, so they be set back again. Um, nothing major, not the same injury, it's just more of a, um, like a kind of roll his ankle. So there's a couple of guys that are kind of there or thereabouts. Um, we'll continue to monitor that. John Obika is a positive for us. We've managed to get him back running um, and back on the pitch this week, so that that's good. John had done very well for us um, and unfortunately picked up a, a pretty nasty hamstring injury so hopefully we can try and kick him, kick him on in the coming days and, and he gives us another really good option at the top end of the park. Yeah, again, he's, we're kind of pushing him on this week, so um, we'll just see how that how that pans out. Don't want to go too hard and, and set him back, but like I say, from I think it was maybe my first four games in Charles, John started them all, and I think he played ninety minutes in them all, having not played an awful lot of football prior to that, and and he, and he gives a real threat, he gives a real platform to play off of. Um, so I'm keen to get him back involved in the group because you're always keen when players have crossed the white line and done something for you in games, then um, you're always keen to try and exploit that where you possibly can. So John, John's a great type to have about the place as well and have him on the training pitch and then amongst the dressing room. So uh, that, that that can be a positive for us in the, in the coming days and weeks. Yeah, there was a, a just a, a just a kind of blood vision issue with, with, with Dan. There was there was there was no major issue. He was back in the, the training park and kind of had him checked out, and everything seems to be okay. So I think more maybe leading towards a migraine than anything else. Um, so um, no, I've got no major concerns over over Dan Casey. So you look forward to this stage of the season, Stuart, but can it be difficult to set targets when there's only so many games left? Nah, nah. Again, I think you guys have heard me saying it umpteen times that my target and has been since, since I came in has been the next game and what you can try and achieve in the next game so I'm probably not even looking yeah we, we chunk it up and we know there's five games to play but my, my target falls into the next one um, and, and trying to trying to get yourself a win trying to get a, a, a victory at home I think we were a wee bit disappointed the last time we played at home against Dundee United in the sense that we probably dominated the number of chances in the game, and we, we had a we had a lot in front of their goal. Um, probably a game that we shouldn't have lost, but we did. Um, so I think it's trying to right that wrong from from that situation, and and, and try and see if we can build on. On a, what, what's been documented is a poor home record. Let's not kid ourselves. It, it has been for a club like Motherwell, um, and and we want to go and try and pick up as many wins as we can across the board. But especially at home, we want to go and see if we can can try and make this a difficult place to play. So from that point of view, we don't. Well, on too many things, but there's always a little added motivation. And how interested have you been with the turnaround and attitude since you've come in? What do you put that down to? I, I, I always put everything down to players, uh, and again, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to be too humble in, in any way, shape, or form. I think everybody wants to talk about, you know, how you've dramatically changed things. It's my job to facilitate what happens at the football club. It's my job to put demands on players. It's my job to set out a game plan um, and get the best out of people, not just players, staff members, right across the board and, and everything I'm doing. I had a day yesterday where I was covering absolutely everything uh, across the, the football club and those days are good, but it's it's important that everybody 
gets my time, but all I do is I facilitate and I put demands on people. I need good people to, uh, to have an uptake in, in what I'm asking of them. Um, so again, that's where I pitch it back to the players. Having set out game plans in pretty much every game that we've played since I've come in, I've had a real good uptake and a, a, a real good buy-in from the players. And the next part is that I demand that for the next five games as well. Uh, I keep talking about it, how well supported we've been here from from the fans who have had a difficult season along with the rest of us. Um, and, and, and my job is to make sure that we can give them as much as we possibly can. And I know that sounds a little bit nostalgic and, and all the rest of it, but again, I'm a huge believer in it. Um, but it does come down to the players. If I don't get the buy-in for the players and, and, I, and my voice and my words don't resonate with them, then we'll, we'll never achieve anything. But as I say, if I don't get that from players, equally, I'll, I'll know soon enough and, uh, and and then we have to try and change that situation in some way. But fortunately for me, in every game I've played and everything I've asked them to do, um, I, I can see a full focus and a full determination to try and carry that out where possible. That Celtic game, um, in the last time out, Stuart, with that 1-1 drop, could you have envisaged a result like that whenever you first took over, going back to February? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can. Um, and, and again, it's never to get carried away. I think I heard Billy Dodds talking about it. Um, after the after the semi final, you know, people almost writing them off. You go and enjoy your day at Hamden and all the rest. Yeah, I've worked with Billy and him really well, uh, and and I have the same mindset. You never, as a professional, turn up to anything. You never ever think. You know, I, I was never thinking too far ahead towards the game at Celtic Park. But when it comes, I always believe in the people that I work with, and I always believe in my own ability to go and try and help a, a group of players and a team get a result wherever you're playing, whoever you're playing against, and. It's that old adage, isn't it? You, you, you don't turn up if you think you're just going to be there just to make up the numbers. So I heard Billy's words at the weekend and I thought he spoke really, really well on it. Um, but I think that goes for the rest of us. We know Celtic, a team like Celtic's record and how good they are at home. But I, you ask any one of the, the staff or players here at the football club turning up at Celtic Park, we believe we could get something out of the game. And I think you could see that belief in our group as well as the, as, as the game went on for 90, 98 minutes. I think throughout that you knew that Motherwell were competitive and, and, and had a chance of getting something out of the game. Yeah. Uh, and just lastly for me, um, how's the contract talks with some of the players that are out of contract towards themselves? Like Max Johnson was offered one before and Dean Camillus is out of contract with someone as well, is there any update on these kind of No, no, again, probably to make it as clear as possible, um, I think we've been really proactive um, as much as we possibly can in a number of situations and it's where I've always been as a person very, very calm in these situations. I get asked the question constantly, I hear people that start to panic and start to worry and all the rest of it. I think when you as a football club and you as a manager have taken every step and every stride that you possibly can make it known what players you want, put offers down in front of them, try to make that as luc uh, lucrative as you possibly can in relation to what your club can offer, then I think there's a point where you have to step back and just be calm about it and, and, and allow players to make the decisions, take advice from, from the relevant people. I believe in development, I believe in trying to uh, hit milestones as a player, playing game time, being on the park, becoming a better a better player but a better person as well, keep putting those two things together. I believe in all those factors, um, so if you think that Motherwell is the place where you become both a better player and a better person, then this is the right place for you. If it's not, then it's not, so I don't ever get too caught up in it, and, and again this is never a personal attack to players or anything like that, but there has to be a point from me and from people at the football club where we take a step back. Back. We've done absolutely everything that we possibly can. I'm really comfortable in my own skin in that. Um, and then we'll find out what decisions are through time. Sometimes players want that extra few weeks. Sometimes they want a bit extra time to see if there's other things available, which is, you know, everybody's right. Of course it is. Um, but from my point of view, there's not another thing that um, and players that we want to keep and players that we think can add real value to our group that we can do. So um, as far as I'm concerned, it probably settles there and people can probably stop asking me the question. Scott, it's not... not, not not an attack on you as such, but it's just I'm going to keep giving the same answer because we can't do another thing about it. Um, and and what I do know is that a number of players that you'll be referencing to, I think we all can see that they're fully committed to the cause. And if they weren't, that would be create an issue. You mentioned you were across everything yesterday with the club. How is it the, the process with your, your getting on with it, chief executive? Has that impacted you at all? Are you no, no, it's a, it's, it's a fair question. Um, it's a fair question. I think we know um, that there has been a process in place by the football club to, to make sure that we get the correct appointment and, and we get somebody that's going to add real value here in that role that is quite clearly that connection between the likes of myself and, 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 the, and the directors at the football club with, with a lot of really top top guys, as in the, the, the people that work at that that top level, the directors um, that support us at the football club. We have a kind of 
interim process at the minute, um, and I'm working very, very closely with one of the one of the board members um, that has a wealth of experience in a number of different fields. So that's been a terrific support to me, um, and that's been a terrific support to the football club. Um, but that's a process where it's not going to be long term. It's going to be a kind of shorter term process, which allows the club to make the correct appointment at, at, at the end of it. So I'm grateful for that. There's been a lot of thought that's went into it, and there's been a lot of hard work that's went into that. Um, and you know, again, from me, full marks in terms of the support that I get and in, in, in the background for that. There's no point in us elaborating on it too much because it is certainly that sort of interim, short term process. Um, but all I will say is that it's 100% been done for the for the right reasons and there's no stone been unturned off the back of it. Um, but there will be a process moving forward that hopefully we have that longer term plan. You touched upon the, sorry, you touched upon the, the excitement at the top and the bottom half will generate until the end of the season. Particularly coming off the back of a result like Celtic Park, given that you won't be playing against the top six teams, will that push the lads saying like next season we want to be in, in that mix? I think it always does, yeah. I think it always does. I think you, it certainly whets the appetite when you go and play at these big venues against top players and top managers. Keep speaking about being consistent. I said that before the Celtic game, that that's an aspect that you have to embrace. Um, but I don't ever think you can get bored with it. I think you have to want to um, want to have that feeling. I think you want that for, for the last sort of five games if we're talking about getting into a split. But irrespective of that, that's that's never a, a, a disrespect to the rest of the teams in this league because I just think at any given time, whatever week it is, you're playing against a good side, you're playing against a good group of players and I think almost every game brings a different challenge as well, which has to be a kind of exciting factor of football, you know, I don't think it's too mundane, I don't think that we, we see the same thing every week and we have to deal with the same scenario, so irrespective of a top six, bottom six, everyone has wanted to be in the top six, of course we do, um, but yeah, I think you're right that there's always those little bits of added motivation um, and I think getting a taste for going and performing so well at Celtic Park, I think you, you, you want more of that undoubtedly. Looking at the game on Saturday, the last time we yeah, um, I was at that game, and it's something that's in my head. To be honest with you, I keep speaking about not going too far back and not, you know, kind of dwelling on the past. But I, I think it's, I think it's important to probably mention that last game. Um, not that there's, eh, it's a different situation. There's a lot of different players and and all the rest of it, but a different game in, entirely. Um, but I always talk about you never get that one back, uh, and by that I just mean that Motherwell were sitting two 0 up, probably very dominant in the game. Kilmarnock go down to ten men, um, and then for me sitting watching the game completely against the run of play, Kilmarnock end up getting what was a brilliant point from 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 their point of view. Um, but my message always to players is over the course of a season you talk about it, but you never get to play that game again from being two 0 up and playing against ten men and being really dominant. Um, so as much as we use it as a motivation, I also think as players uh, and staff we use it as a learning tool that when you find yourself in that position, you manage the game properly, you show a professionalism and a concentration level that you see that game out. That's a game that you have to win. Um, now, again, how that affects your points tally, for me as a, as a football club, it's two points less than you should have had, simple as that. Um, but I think not just by playing against Kilmarnock, but for us as a group moving forward, if you find yourself in that situation again, that has to be a game that you see out, it has to be a game that you get three points from. And I think it's maybe using it as a, um, not using it as a stick to beat the players over the head with, but having that realisation that there has been that moment in a season in a game where you used to have three points and they never. So how, how do we become better as a group to ensure that that never happens again? Looking at the expected league positions as well, a lot of people have suggested that Kermarnock's need for points is greater. I can't imagine you agree with that. No, I don't. I, I, I never do. It's it's a, a topic that I've mentioned both to the players. It's a topic I've mentioned to, to you guys as well. Uh, whose who's need is greater? Um, it depends the motivation from the people that are working towards it, really. Um, and I see a, a, a terrific motivation from what we have here. Um, yes, we're ahead of Kermarnock in, in points and league placings, but you know, um, if we turn up and don't think that our, our motivation is great, then we're going to lose the game. Simple as that. If we turn up with the same sort of motivation as Kilmarnock, we'll undoubtedly have. Uh, to my mind, that's how I'm preparing. Um, then I think we give ourselves every chance. So again, I don't think it's o a bit overcomplicating that. It's, it's my job to make sure that the players go through the steps during the week to make sure that come that Saturday, then we're at our, our optimum level that we can go and really try and produce a performance and, and get a result. Sure, one last question for me. We were asking all Premiership managers the decision was made yesterday to move the traditional kickoff time for the Scottish Cup final from 3 to 5.30. What's your view on that? 
I've always been a three o'clock on a Saturday guy, a, re a reference to it all the time, but again, if you're playing in this, the Scottish Cup final, you know, I would love to play in the Scottish Cup final, I'd love to be involved in it, I've been fortunate to do so um, in one occasion, um, whatever time that was played at, I don't think I would be complaining too much, I understand that there's pros and cons for everything that we do, um, but again, my take is I love football at three o'clock on a Saturday, but if it's not, and I don't think we're going to cry about it too much and, uh, and and not take part. I think everybody will still be there supporting it. And I think everybody will still be um, in attendance that's taking part. So that's that, that's always a kind of simple outlook for me. But I would like to see it as traditional time, to be honest. I'd spend all those years in the Highlands. Is it more difficult for Inverness fans? You know, they're, they're limited in their options of travel and when they get back up early to midnight and get a pint. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I just, I just, I just remember, uh, I just remember uh, being a part of it before, just a s small one for me, I think it was 19,000 Ross County supporters that went down back in 2010, that I was a part of that when they uh, watched the game against Dundee United, and I think if the kickoff was 3 o'clock in the morning, you'd probably have, you'd have probably had 19,000 people going, because it means so much, it's an event that you'll never ever forget, I, I understand the, the, the travel, problems as such and the time you'll get back up the road but for the opportunity to go and play and coach managing a, a in a Scottish Cup final and go and support your team again this is maybe just me I, I don't I, I wouldn't really fuss too much I would like to see it being a three o'clock kickoff I think it helps everybody but I don't know how much an impact that has on the crowd to be honest if you're an Inverness fan and you get a chance to go and watch your team in the cup final against uh, Celtic then I think I think most of them will turn up for it